Hello there and welcome back to another video. Now, a fair warning before we get too far into this video, I am a little bit under the weather while I record this voiceover, and so I might be a little bit nasally today. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the TC002C thermal camera from Topdon. This is a small thermal camera that plugs into your phone and uses your phone's display, and I think that it might be a really interesting product. As a disclaimer, this camera was sent to me by Topdon free of charge. However, Topdon does not get to dictate what I say about it in any way, shape, or form, and the first time they'll be seeing this video is when it goes public to all of you. Inside the box, there's a really nice zippered, hard shell storage case. Since the lens on this camera is apparently somewhat delicate and needs to be taken care of, having this kind of storage case for it is super awesome. Inside the case, there are two USB cables, one of which is a USB-C extension, and the other is a female USB-C to male Apple Lightning. These cables make a lot of sense because I ordered the TC002C model camera, which is their camera that's designed to work with iPhones that have a USB-C port, like the 15 and the 16. Sadly, Topdon seems to indicate that this camera will not work with Android phones that also have a USB-C port, However, I haven't been able to test if that's really true because I don't have an Android phone. If you do have an Android device or an iPhone with a lightning port though, Topdon makes specific models of this same camera that are compatible with these two phones. However, if you're thinking of buying one with the native lightning port, I'd actually advise against that for reasons I'll get into later. The camera itself has a really nice build quality, although it does feel a little bit light. However, I could actually see the light weight of it being beneficial, as it won't put tons of stress on the USB-C connector, which is its only mechanical connection to the phone. The main part of its body is made out of aluminum, and the ends are plastic. The lens is recessed slightly, which might be beneficial for keeping it safe, but I could see it being a pain when coming to clean it. The instructions included with the camera are basic, but they're also functional and they're well illustrated, which is nice to see. And according to them, the next step for me was to get my phone out and download the top infrared app to use the thermal camera. I do wish that this camera worked without an app. However, I also understand that the standard camera app on the iPhone is probably not built to support thermal camera features. After installing the app, I went through its first time setup. It asked for access to my photos library, which is reasonable because the app is capable of capturing videos and photos and needs a place to store them. However, if you're a more privacy-minded person and don't want apps having access to that, you can deny access to the library like I did, and it won't affect the majority of the app's functionality. Of course, you won't be able to take photos and videos through the app, but you can still always screenshot and screen record. And so, with the thermal camera plugged into my phone and working properly, I started looking at things around my room with it to test it out. One of the first things that I took a look at was the control box for my filming light system, as this is basically a three-channel DIY PWM LED dimmer circuit, and it's completely passively cooled because I didn't think that any part of it got hot enough to require cooling. However, I've not really been able to verify this properly, and so I chose to have a look inside. This is where one of the things that I really like about this camera is noticeable. It has a pretty high resolution. Topdon markets the resolution as being 256 by 192 pixels, and there's also a super resolution mode that I'll try out later that's supposedly 512 by 384. Anyway, I was able to look at the control electronics in here and see that they were all about as hot as I expected. The given temperature readouts in the app made it super easy to figure out if the things that showed up as being the hottest in the frame were actually hot enough to be of concern, and most of them weren't. The MOSFETs weren't that warm, most of the connections might have been a little bit warm, around 42 degrees Celsius, but it was nothing that was really worth being concerned over. The only thing that was a surprise, and a minorly concerning one at that, was that the terminals of the on-off switch were sitting at about 51 degrees Celsius, which is way higher than I thought they'd be. Maybe I underspect the on-off switch a little for this device, and maybe it's not rated for the amount of current that's actually being drawn through it. I might have to look into that later. I then moved on and had a look at some of the other things in my room after playing with my body heat on the work mat for a little bit, which I found quite entertaining. I could see the temperature of my LED filming lights to make sure that they weren't getting too hot. Even the top one, which doesn't have a cooling fan on it, wasn't exceptionally warm, and that was good to see. I then went over to my desk and had a fun time looking at how one of my pieces of rack mount gear that lives under my monitor was significantly warmer than both the custom macro controller I built in my last video, which sits on top of it, and the audio interface that sits below it. I then tested this thing out on another one of my projects, my DIY power supply tester. I plugged an ATX power supply into it and ran a loaded test on that power supply. 
Then, I was able to see the MOSFETs and power resistors that corresponded to the voltage rails that were plugged in, heat up, and I thought that was really fun. I also liked how I could see the core of the ARM CPU on the Teensy 4.1 microcontroller heat up immediately after switching the device on. I enjoyed looking around my room at my electronic devices and previous projects, seeing how they looked in the thermal view. I also thought it was pretty cool how I could see my footsteps when I walked around the room, as the heat from my feet had transferred into the floor. Moving on though, I had a quick look at my server rack, which just like my other electronic devices, was really interesting to see. I could see that my network switches were the warmest devices in the front of the rack, and I could see the large amount of heat at the back of the rack. After this, I set up something a little unconventional to check out. I own this Lauten Audio LA320 tube condenser microphone, which, as the name suggests, has a vacuum tube inside it for its amplifier circuit. Vacuum tubes heat up when they function, and so I powered the microphone on and was curious to see whether or not I'd be able to see it heat up over time which I was able to see, and I thought that was really cool. Also, at some point, my cat came into the room, and I was able to observe the really interesting temperature differences across certain parts of his body. It's super cool how his nose doesn't just feel cold when I touch it because it feels cold, but actually because it is much colder than the rest of his body, by like 10 degrees Celsius. Another use case I wanted to check out with this thermal camera that led me to look at some other things around the house with it was looking at some more utilitarian things around my house. Having a look at a toilet, I was able to see where the water was at in the tank, which maybe isn't that crazy of a thing for a toilet, but you can definitely imagine using this camera to check for water leaks within walls, floors, and ceilings. This is because it'll outline the cooler sections where the water is, and you can actually see what's happening. Finally, I had a look at the front door of my house, where the camera was able to point out the cooler drafts around the sides of the door, and especially the bottom. I recorded this bit of the video quite late at night, and so it was much colder outside than inside, and it was really easy to see where the energy was leaking out around the door, which I think is incredibly handy. Now, the final thing that I tested before wrapping up by checking out the super resolution feature was whether or not the camera worked well with the included USB cables. Obviously, I expected it to work well with the USB-C extension, and it did, and using this extension made it much easier to get the camera into tight spaces and still be able to see the thermal image on the phone, so I'm glad TopDon includes it. However, I was skeptical of the USB-C to lightning cable because I had seen some stuff online about this camera only being good for USB-C iPhones and not working with lightning ones, even with an adapter cable. However, it appears that whatever I had seen was either false, or TopDon made some changes since it was posted, because the camera obviously includes one of these cables, and when testing it with a borrowed iPhone 13, it worked flawlessly. And this actually leads me to substantiate one of the claims that I made earlier in this video, when I mentioned that TopDon has models of this camera for Android phones and lightning iPhones. I said that it would probably not be a good idea, at least in my opinion, to buy the model that has the native lightning port. This is because I'm not sure if TopDon has made the lightning model compatible with USB-C iPhones since their release, and getting an adapter cable for that might be slightly difficult. And to add on to that, since the USB-C model can work with both kinds of iPhones without issue, it's definitely the more future-proof option. Now, the final thing that I want to touch on in this review before giving my final thoughts is the camera's super resolution feature. I tested this feature out when looking in depth at the temperatures of a circuit I was messing around with recently, and it does seem to increase the overall resolution of the image slightly. However, this feature doesn't feel as drastic a change as the quoted resolution increase would suggest, meaning that I personally see it as more of a gimmick than a feature, but it's kind of cool I guess. Thankfully, the camera's native resolution is high enough to give very useful measurements, and so this isn't really a major loss in my opinion. So, to conclude my overall opinion on this little device, I think that it's honestly a really good little thermal camera. I will say that the price initially seems a bit high compared to the other options on the market, however, when comparing specs, the resolution that this camera offers is, in general, much higher than that of the competition. The accessories that are included with the camera are also quite nice, with the two USB cables that work well with the camera, and the hard shell storage case that keeps the lens safe. The app, which can kind of be considered an accessory, also works perfectly fine, and I haven't ran into any weird issues with it yet. Now, there was one thing that I didn't like about the camera, and you might be able to see this in some of the B-roll, and that's that sometimes the image would freeze really often and would only come back around 2 seconds later. After looking it up, I found out that this was because of the camera auto-calibrating, 
and that's fine, it's just something to be aware of. Apparently, you should be able to turn it off from within inside the app, which is kind of useful in case for whatever reason the auto calibration is really getting on your nerves. However, I am actually kind of glad that it auto calibrates relatively often because it means that the temperature readouts it gives are relatively trustworthy. I think that in the end though, this camera is a decent value and a decent product. And even though I received my model for free, if someone I knew was in the market for a thermal camera, I would definitely recommend that they check out this one. Well, that's all that I have for you in this video. I hope that you were able to enjoy it and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.